Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 24 of my web design and programming tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to grab extremely complicated information from a website using regular expressions. To a certain extent, this is going to be about how to think about regular expressions and how to look at data. So this is definitely something I've never done before. Matt wrote in, and he said, can you get this information here as well as this information here from a website and take all these individual pieces of information and then save them over into a database. Well, I took a look at this and the first thing I do whenever I'm looking to scrub a website is I look at the source. This is very bad. Why is it bad? There are no tags. Okay, that's, some, that's the easy way to grab information. But since there are no tags, I just have the data to work with. And just so you know, it was a success. I was able to grab all this information. So this is the final output. Now to how exactly do I look at this information? Okay, well, let's just consider the fact that all of these lines have the same format, and they do. So, I know Derby Lane, and I'm going to have this same format, meaning that there's going to be a certain number of letters, certain number of letters, always two numbers, followed by four numbers, followed by a certain number of letters, and so forth and so on. Okay, great. So I'm going to create a regular expression that's going to specifically target this line of text. And throughout this entire form, what is awesome is all of these have this exactly the same format. All right, so then we move on to this line. Okay, well, if you look at this briefly, it might look that all these lines have the same format, but they do not. Look down here, you can see that there's an additional number on this line that is not on any of these other lines, okay? So what I'm gonna do, in my head I'm thinking as I'm looking at this, is I'm gonna grab this whole line of information with a regular expression, and then what I'm gonna do in this special circumstance is just treat these lines differently based off of how many numbers are contained starting here, and ending there, and how the different number of numbers will affect how I handle this data. Then on top of that, you see this funky little fraction symbol here. I'm going to show you in this tutorial exactly how to account for that. Then on top of that, we have a star here, so I'm going to have to account for that. It shows up randomly. And also, we have a random number of numbers here that precede the decimal place. And also, sometimes there's one digit, sometimes there's two digits here. And even if you scroll down, Sometimes characters jump into the mix. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is to take all of this information that doesn't seem to be organized very well at all, not even accounting for the fact that there's a different number of spaces in between all of these different pieces of data, and I'm going to show you exactly how to grab all of it. So I grabbed my trusty text wrangler notepad, and it took about 20 minutes to create this whole entire thing before. And I know because I'm grabbing two different lines of information, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use fopen twice, and I'm going to jump in here, and I'm going to grab this guy right here, and hit copy. So I'm not going to type all that out, and paste it in there just like that. Close that off with a quote, followed by, I just need read permission, so that's all I'm going to use. And then I'm going to copy this whole line of text, paste it down here, because I'm going to have to read it in twice because I'm doing two regular expressions on this information, and I do not want searching through some of the information to affect some of the other information. Then what I'm going to do, now that I got those guys, is I'm going to go while, not F-E-O-F. -E what this function does is it tests if the end of the file has been reached, and I'm going to perform this just on file, right like that, and then it comes down to the regular expression itself. Well, I'm going to use preg match, all, and it just searches for all matches to the regular expression and then stores them in an array that I can then iterate through. So I'm going to use my delimiter, which is going to surround the entire regular expression. Use the caret symbol that's going to signify this as the beginning of the line of text. And because I don't have to worry about the fact that these races are going to be taking place in more than one place, they're always going to start with Derby Lane. Super, I can start off searching for Derby Lane. Then I know that there's going to be one or more space. And just to make this a little bit easier to understand, let's jump over here and let's grab this whole thing right here and jump back in because this is exactly what I did while I was creating this guy. Put the regular expression that I'm, or what I'm searching for right here on the screen. Okay, so you can see this being built as we go. So, bring match all. So when, I know it's going to start with Derby Lane and then there's going to be a certain number of spaces, but I don't know how many. So I put backslash S and then a plus sign. And then I know that I can expect a certain number of characters. I'm going to put a plus sign in there. And I'm going to put the question mark in here so this is non-greedy. Close that off. And then guess what? I know I'm going to have a certain number of spaces again. And then what I'm going to do is I know that I'm going to have a certain number of characters, backslash W, followed by 
the fact that I can expect them always to be three in length, followed by a space or a number of spaces that I don't know how long. And then I'm going to come in and do the same thing with digits. And I know in this circumstance that I'm going to have two, so I put that in there. Followed by spaces that I don't know how long. Followed by another digit that I can guarantee there's going to be at least four of them. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I put these parentheses in here, what these parentheses are doing. It's going to grab me Derby Lane. And then it's going to grab me this word here. And then it's going to grab me this whole string of first three characters, meaning January. And then it's going to grab me two digits. And then it's going to grab me four digits. Okay, so I'm going to have this whole date right here. And that's why the parentheses are around there. Because I want to grab that whole piece of information. Then backslash S. And then I'm going to have a certain number of characters. Close that off. Followed by a certain number of spaces. Don't know how many. Followed by some type of character, followed by the word grade, followed by a certain number of spaces, and then some more characters, followed by a certain number of spaces, followed by three digits, and then I'm going to expect that there's going to be a parenthesis, so I need to zero that out. That's why I have the backslash in here, or backslash it out, whatever you want to say. It's followed by a certain number of spaces, followed by the word time, colon, certain number of spaces, followed by a bunch of characters that can be in this side of there. And then I'm going to have the end of the line is going to be met, or should be expected. Put the delimiter inside of here. Then I'm going to call a function called fgets. What it does is it just gets the line of text from the file that I define. And then everything that I've defined inside of parentheses over here is going to be stored inside of an array in this circumstance called race info. Then I'm going to put preg set order. And basically what this does is it orders the results to be based off of the first sub pattern in parentheses. So everything's going to be in the array based off of the order that I put them in parentheses. I know that I was able to get a hold of Derby Lane, da 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 da. Super. Well, now I need to worry about the other line of text. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab both of these guys, paste them both in here. Great. Right like that. So now I know exactly what I need to work with here. So what I'm going to do, put another delimiter in here, carrot symbol again, and then I know that I'm going to start off with capital letters A through Z, lowercase letters A through Z, potentially a quote, potentially a space. And I want to store that. And then I want to store the next thing also, which is going to be digits that are going to be two in length. That's consistent. And then potentially I might have to grab one of these guys inside of here. And how you reference these weird looking fractions is a backslash followed by P followed by capital N. However, I don't know if it's going to be there. So what do I do? I put a question mark inside of there. So that's what you use the question mark for. And then I know I'm going to have digits. I'm going to have one digit followed by spaces, but I don't know how many. Then I'm going to have another digit, followed by a space, that I don't know how many, followed by another digit. Guess what's coming? Spaces, don't know how many. And then I'll accept any characters as long as they are not uppercase A through Z. So that's what that carrot symbol does right there. Expect a whole bunch of them potentially. And then I'm going to put in that this whole pattern is going to end with an uppercase letter A to Z. And as you can see, I'm not putting parentheses around it because I don't want that information. And it's going to be one capital letter followed by any number of additional characters, right like that. And that's the end of that regular expression. And then I'm going to be using pretty much the same information. So I'm going to copy and paste this. Copy. Come in here. Bonk. Get rid of this extra comma. Except in this circumstance, it's going to be file two. And I'm going to call this guy right here dog info. And everything else is exactly the same. All right. So all of everything in parentheses is going to be stored in these two different arrays. One of them is called dog info. One of them is called race info. You know a lot about what's going on here. I'm actually going to leave these in here. How am I going to iterate through these arrays? With for each, if I can spell it right. And I'm going to go through race info, give it a temporary value of val. Jump in here, tab, echo. Match is going to be the first thing I pull out of here. And since it was the first thing in the parentheses, it's going to be in the index zero. Grab this. I'm actually just going to shoot this out on the screen. Get the parentheses that follows. I'm just increasing these values. So now all I got to do is come in here and change all these. All right, got all those in there. They all look good. Move up the screen here. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing for dog info. As I'm going to store these in val2. And now I'm going to continue to do this as long as string length. And then I'm going to use the string string function to find out if the string in val2 contains the word derby lane. String 
string. So pass val two zero right like that, and then derby lane right like that, and then echo dog info val two zero. And I'm going to copy this. Copy. And I'm going to need four of these guys right like that. Come in here. One, two, three, four, and then we're going to have name weight. And you might not be able to tell what I'm doing here, but basically what this is, let's scroll up here for a second. See how I know this line and this line are going to be the same up until the point that this shows up. What I'm doing down here is I'm going to just print out up to this point for every single line in, that contains information on the dog. Okay, and position at break is the very last thing. All right, so I know that this is going to be the same for every single dog up until that point. Well, now I'm going to close this off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it rest of numbers is equal to preg replace. And I'm replacing here any instance of multiple different spaces, any excuse to use regular expressions, with a single space. Okay, so I just cleaned up all my data. I know that there's going to be a single space between each of those values, where previously I did not know that. So just so you're clear, value two, the index six, is going to be all of this information right here that I'm going to be working with, okay? All right, so there's a different number of digits here. Sometimes we're going to have one, two, three, and sometimes we're going to have one, two, three, four, five. So I have to handle that. It's really no problem. Now what I'm going to do, take rest of nums, and then I'm going to explode this string, dividing the data up between the single spaces, which I know I have single spaces because I did this guy right here. Rest of nums, boom, boom, right like that. And now what I can do is count the number of items that are in this new array. And that's what the count function does. And if they're equal to six, type rest of nums, right like that. And then break lead, copy that, put that in there. One, two, three. You can see I'm pretty much doing the same thing over and over again. This is just the way my brain works. Some other people are very efficient in other things. And I'm not one of those people that thinks there's definitely a way to do things. If it works, in my opinion, that's great. Oh, and by the way, the regular expressions that you saw up there, yes, I could make those much, much shorter, but I chose not to because of wanting it to be understandable. That's another thing that I just do. I like having things be understandable rather than short and confusing. But if you like things to be short, let them be short. I don't care. And here, you can actually, I'm still going to use all these things. Oink, right inside of here. One thing that's going to be different here, though, right here. And you don't need to know what all these technical dog things mean either. Don't let that confuse you. Seconds complete race and final odds. And then all I need to do is come in here and type in two, type in three, type in four. And here, just for neatness reasons, I'm going to throw that guy right there. And then I'm going to close this off. And I'm going to close that off. Leave this where it is. And close off the final thing. Type in F close. Close that file. F close two to close that as well and exit to exit the script. And that's it. That's the whole entire thing right there. That is how to scrub through a website that doesn't give you much to work with in regards to tags and to a certain extent has oddball information. The one thing I wanted to cover at the end of this tutorial, because I keep getting asked this question and I'm not a political guy or anything, but I just wanted to answer it. People keep asking me, and I know this is completely off topic from this, so I just wanted to get this done with. People keep asking me what it means when they hear in the media that the government is providing corporations with tax breaks to ship jobs overseas. And obviously, I live in the United States, and this is the United States issue. Basically, what it means is if you have a corporation, in the United States, they're supposed to pay 35% tax on all of their profits. Well, in the tax code, there is a rule that says if a corporation makes a profit overseas, they do not need to pay this 35% until they ship that money back and incorporate it as a profit for this corporation. So hence, any corporation could make a billion dollars, for example, and if they make it in China or wherever they make it, and they never ship this profit back to the United States, they never have to pay this 35%. So what they're talking about in regards to shipping jobs overseas is if they take this money into China or wherever, and they spend that money there, paying people, building factories, blah, 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 then they never have to pay taxes on this offshore profit. So real quickly and dirty, that's how to answer that question because I keep getting it over and over again and I didn't think it was worth my time to do a whole tutorial on just that little tiny thing. So there is actually two totally bizarre tutorials in one. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, till next time.